What happens to your music and to your royalties if you were to die? Ooh, serious right off the bat. What happens so dark. if a library <laughs> if a library suddenly changes its entire structure of how it works? Can you imagine that ever happening? What happens if music income you used to have and depended on for your music income suddenly just dries up? Hmm. What happens if you just lose the love for composing or for um, uh, for producing or for performing or anything that you do in music? What if you just quit loving it and anything else like that that might be paying you income that you live on? <clears throat> um, what happens if a pandemic comes? <laughs> I think we know a little bit about that one. So today's episode is what happens if, how to handle big changes in your music income. Big picture, small picture, that's what I want to talk about today. My voice is failing me. <clears throat> but welcome to the Make Music Income podcast number 52. I am Eric Copeland of Make Music Income and Hello Composers. And I am here with Stephen Bedall of the Production Music Academy. So before we get into all this, <clears throat> all these what ifs, Let's hear from a man who always knows what to do if Steve, what have you been doing this week, my friend? Oh man, never never mind us dying. What if, what if what if, what if the library dies? That happens too. <laughs> yeah, um I've had some library changes this week. Uh that Let just came down the pike, so that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um this is a great subject to get into. I I've been um I've been having a good week. I'm just trying to finish up the trailer course, uh, which is going to be like a relaunch for the academy. Um, that's going to be the the big thing that I'm I'm going to be uh, you know throwing out there in the new year. Uh, yeah, just really trying to get through that. There's a lot left to do, um, but I'm really excited about it, and it's I think it's going to work out to be a great course. Um, yeah, other than other than that, um, I had some really cool news just the other day. Uh, Dave Kropf actually. Um, he hosted a, this is a really interesting seminar in the 52 Qs uh, community, um, and uh, yeah, big shout out to the 52 Qs community. Great, um, you know, great community that Dave's got set up there, and yeah. uh, you can you can check that out at uh, 52Qs.com. And you can but, join for free. You can join for free, and uh, yeah, he's got different tiers of uh, you know membership, si si very similar to to what I'm doing, um, and. Uh, yeah, he so he had this seminar a little while back where um, one of the publishers that he works with um, gave some feedback on various members' uh, sports cues, and I submitted one because I was genuinely genuinely curious if the the cue would work like in sports, and you know if not, then like what could I do to you know try to make it more suitable for for TV and and, and the sync world. Um, anyway, he really liked it, and uh, one thing led to another. And he it, it eventually got they asked if it could be included in their catalog, and um, cool. I found out the other day that it made its way onto a football broadcast. Sweet. Um, yeah, so I can't remember the actual game. Um, it was it was a uh, it was synced to, um, and I haven't seen the actual clip. But uh, yeah, Dave just let me know the other day that it went live, and um, and yeah, the network cool. used the the cue, and that just totally made my day. And uh, yeah, nice. that was Absolutely. that's awesome. So. Um, other than that, man, yeah, just gearing up to fly back to Ottawa. Uh, we're going to be flying back. Uh, my wife and I are going to be flying back on Christmas Day. And we are just going to spend 10 days uh, in the Arctic uh, icy conditions of Ottawa. And just, you know, I don't know, drinking Baileys and... Uh, and uh, Sitting by a roaring fire. <laughs> that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> it's really not a whole lot going to go on. Probably, I'm probably going to do a lot of sleeping. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing my family. My all of my families uh, is uh, out uh, out there in Ottawa. So um, yeah, other than that, man, like there's not a whole lot going on. What about you? Oh man, um, I've been working on Christmas stuff this time of year. I know I know the rules. I know you're supposed to work on Christmas stuff like before during yeah. June, you know, and and then and, and pitch it in in the summer. And you're stuff stockpiling like that, for next year. I, that's what I think of it as. I just yeah. enjoy around this time of year. I get, I start listening to more Christmas music. I get ideas for different arrangements of Christmas music. I create Christmas original songs, and cool. And I just, I get inspired to write Christmas during Christmas. I know it's crazy, but that's awesome. uh, yeah. 
there's a lot of um, thought and, and, you know, Dave and I have this discussion. We just had lunch last week and we have this discussion all the time about, uh, you know, writing like you did. You wrote a specific cue for a specific reason for that thing, for that sports thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and and most people, uh, the Jesse's of the world, the Daniels of the world, the Dave's of the world, they are v pretty adamant about writing specifically and, and not wasting your time writing specifically for a use and getting it out there and getting it used and getting income coming. That's the whole point. Totally. Right? Yeah. I get that. And I do that as well. I have libraries I'm writing specifically things for right now, but I'm also just terribly uh, artistic. <laughs> and so I will just, I just feel that I want to do things and I just do them. Now they usually don't bring in. Do they always bring in a lot of money for me? Maybe not in the short term, no. Maybe over the long term, yes. You know, mm. some of these Christmas songs that I keep creating every holiday and are putting in sync libraries continue to sell every single year. I just got um, some. I looked on TuneSet and I had I've had three placements over the past few days hmm. on uh, some television shows with my Christmas songs that are in the library. Same ones I got last year in, and that paid me two weeks ago. So um, nice to me. That's exciting. And again. Christmas comes every year. It was funny yesterday. I put a video out on Tuesday about, um, or yeah, that was Tuesday about holiday music on the, no, it was on Wednesday. I put a music a video out about why holiday music is important. And, you know, and at the same day, Jesse put a video out about why holiday music is really probably not something you need, you know, cause it's only going to be useful two months of the year. And so you probably don't, you could do some stuff in it but don't focus on it like really <laughs> <Or it's>, like <laughs> even on my screen on my youtube i called it up the other night and his was right next to mine we're both in santa hats and we both have these <laughs> videos about christmas music and his was kind of like yeah you can do it but don't you know don't focus on it because it, it's it's only a couple use a couple months a year and uh, mine was like yes do it because it because i was actually not just yeah. talking about christmas music i was talking about a lot of patriotic music for uh, americans or any country folk tunes and things like that. I was pushing that kind of thing. I think there's all sorts of things we can write for all sorts of holidays. I see his, I I see his point, you know, like, you know, you obviously, you obviously don't want to be writing Christmas music like all year round uh, yeah. or, like, or well, focusing on it, uh, you know, in general. But, but I mean, yeah, I think you're, what you're saying is that you're just getting into the spirit and just like kind of stockpiling a bit yeah. of Christmas cheer, Mind, you know? Yes. And I was talking about other holiday music too. Other yeah, holidays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Halloween, um, especially patriotic songs, because that's four holidays a year that use that Easter songs. Totally. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I even talked about Easter in my video, but um, uh, just other things. So uh, anyway, that was funny that we both talked about that. <laughs> and uh, let's see what else um, I've been trying to push uh, finish up uh, building out the mastermind that I've got. Uh, my Hello Composers mastermind is just about full. And um, nice. uh, as a matter of fact, I just had a nice talk with our pal Arco oh, right great. before we talked today. Shout out, um, shout out to Arco. So, yeah, and saw so his drum set, and we were talking about it. he's getting ready to you know finish at one degree and move on to another music degree. I mean, God, yeah, it's really yeah, he's trying uh, to hustle. He's very motivated. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm excited about the new uh, TuneSat reports. Uh, continuing to see that I've, cons I've seen it all year. I, the, the, all it means to me is I need more songs in more libraries, more libraries and more albums out in more libraries so that there's double, triple, you know, 10 times the amount of, of tune set reports that are coming in. And so that yeah. in five to 10 years, there is just continual stuff being reused every season or, or whenever somebody needs country songs or they need Christmas songs or they need pop songs. They're all out there in these libraries. Right. Uh, to me, that's, I mean, that's interesting to me, and and I and I I think of this as a long game towards retirement type of thing. So, um, but yeah, man, uh, just still making Christmas songs, having a good time, and we'll make them. I'm putting out a new Christmas. I just did a new one this weekend with piano and cello. That was really pretty. Uh, in the bleak midwinter, which is one of my favorite tunes. Got nice. obsessed with that song, and so I had to do this arrangement. Sometimes you just get songs in your head. And until you get them out through your fingers into the doll or recorded and out, it's 
It's like you gotta you gotta get it out there. Is what there, happens? Is there like if a large can... large extended like uh, catalog of um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Not um, copyright. Uh, public domain. Public domain. Yeah, because I keep on like I I look I've looked up the public domain list of Christmas songs and it doesn't look like like there's there's a lot of staples there, but is is there a lot of maybe songs that we don't even like know about yes and that's that's my kind of point this this Chris I'm putting out an uh, an album this weekend on my piano thing it's going to be eight to ten songs and it's called an uncommon Christmas because it's mostly songs like like for instance the Huron Car Carol mm -hmm. things that people some people relate to Christmas but not many people know probably yeah lesser known um, ones okay like in the bleak midwinter is known but it's not known like jingle bells is known and then uh what's another one i did I, i've just done a few different and and i plus i've taken some and turned them inside out turned them from major to minor or minor to major or whatever yeah, yeah. and done some things with them like that so they're they're kind of different and uh very artistic whether this will be something i mean they're all going up to stock so and and available to my non-exclusive uh libraries but um it's also an artistic project, so um, going to get that done this weekend. Otherwise, that's uh, just the continued. Uh, I've been downloading a lot of samples, all these free samples that these people keep putting out. I keep downloading them. And what do you mean? What kind of samples? Uh, Sono Kinetic has been having a Twelve Days of Christmas type of thing. Oh, and, like uh, free libraries that they've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... And and some of them are paid for, but then they throw a little free Jingle Bells, free Hurdy Gurdy, free. Right. Uh, what was the one that I thought was very helpful? The, it was Vivid, free Vivaci or whatever uh, one it was called. It's like, it's like yeah, I definitely like, got that. That's like, nice. Yeah, That's... cinematic runs, very cool. Yeah, I think or, we talked uh, about that last orchestral time. runs. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So I've been just downloading that and. The other last thing I want to talk about that I've discovered, I'm going to do a whole episode on, on, especially on the Hello Composers channel, because I think this is mostly for composers. And that is because I don't talk about music production really on my channel as far as doing that. That's for you to make videos about. But mm -hmm. um, I, I, as a composer, I run into people who don't have a lot of income or money to put into things. And I have been using lo uh, GarageBand a bit lately on my uh old uh, well it's not old it's a 2017 macbook air it's actually my daughter's macbook air but um so i have logic on there just to do some things in in looking at it it is literally logic light i mean yeah. it, it looks the same all the same shortcuts work it has a a good starter catalog of sounds the same sounds that logic has yeah it has a huge loop library just like logic has so if you were just needing something and you had a laptop or you're just you don't have enough money to to buy logic which is only two hundred dollars but if you didn't have enough money to buy logic or to buy a DAW, GarageBand comes free with most macs what a great uh starting place uh, and, and the way they've made it look now on the screen is almost indistinguishable from Logic. And so, and Logic opens those up if you ever graduate to, to using Logic. So right. a great starter writing um, uh, DAW, I think. Um, and it's just, I, I, don't, I don't know if it, why that's just occurred to me just now, but I just think since I'm, I teach Logic now and looking at GarageBand, it does all the things I teach in Logic now. It runs out eventually when you get to uh, some things, obviously, like importing samples and, and things like that. But yeah, yeah. Or There's... just simple writing, just simple composing. Man, GarageBand is not bad at all. Um, not a, I'm not being paid for this. This is not a sponsored <laughs> commercial. <laughs> but I just, it's just GarageBand. something. GarageBand.com. <laughs> I don't, think that, I don't think there is a crash band. Apple.com. <laughs> uh, that's funny. If Apple wants to pay, though, for this uh, oh, endorsement, we'd we be can, happy we to We could use it. a couple extra bucks from Apple. Why not? All right. So um, I guess uh, we should also mention here early on before we get to our subject that um, we will both probably be taking some time off this holidays but we hope to have podcasts still continuing with some interviews that we've done uh, on this channel so uh, still tune in every week because we'll have some some special editions on the podcast for us and then steve and i once we get back from our christmas jaunts and uh all that kind of stuff and get back to regular regular old life we'll we'll be back with with great stuff but there'll still be episodes so never you fear yeah all right so man 
Um, let's just take these questions. These are some of these are big picture questions, what if questions. Some of these are small, specific what if questions. Okay. Um, let's start with one that's already happened. Uh, what happens if a library suddenly changes the entire structure of how it works? And yeah. obviously, this could be motion array, which we've talked about ad nauseum this year and how it completely changed one year ago, well, not quite one year ago, but in January of, of this year, it totally changed the way it paid out. Yeah. Now, it, for, it, for some people, I, I, even for you, I would imagine, it, it at the very first, it was less, right? Yeah, yeah, at first it was less. At first it was less. Um, it, it wasn't a lot more until if, uh, several months into the year um, when I realized what was going on which was just yeah. sort of like a different way of kind of like rewarding the assets that are doing well. I think it comes, and it comes get, down to one word, Lester. Yeah, actually, actually Lester was a real eye opener. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting what's happening. You know, ba there's bound to be changes like that, you know, and, and yeah. I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't discount them making more changes. Who, who knows, maybe this coming January, there'll be another uh, big change. It's just, this is the way things mm -hmm. happen in in yeah. the royalty-free market, especially, you know, we've seen this over the last five years, the just drastic change, man, uh, and more is, is gonna come, more is, is coming. So I don't know what the remedy is to that other than just to diversify and, and to, you know, put your tentacles out there and do as many different things. Um, you know, I think we see a lot of discussion in the Discord community, especially about, um, you know, where, where there's like this visceral frustration with with the changes that are happening. But uh, I really think that it, it's healthy to embrace um, for, or sorry, not embrace, but to brace for these changes uh, because there there more are on the way, and I think you have to prepare yourself and and hedge against them to to some extent. I don't know if you'd agree um, with that. Yeah, and, and I, I, the only thing I want to uh, change in what you just said was royalty-free licensing. I think this applies to all licensing and all libraries because You're what right. I want to talk about today is some, this is some news, actually. I just got an email yesterday from one of the libraries that I work with, um, which is uh, Scorekeepers Music, and they are online. You're able to see them, and they have... Um, they're great to work with, but they uh, actually just sent out a, a kind of a thing to their composers saying, we will no longer accept music or no longer allow music to be put on the DSPs that you sign to our library. Now, as we've talked about on this channel, um, I have been putting stuff from that I've been signed to exclusive libraries up to Spotify because for the most part, most people don't care. Most libraries, sync libraries especially, libraries who are interested in television synchronizations and movies and games and ads, they're more worried about the sync incomes with, and, and the and the performance royalties yeah. than they are the um, than they are uh, con content ID. That's going to be small potatoes compared to the other stuff for them. Right. Here's the problem. Everybody is registering their music through CD Baby or, or, or distributing their music through CD Baby and DistroKid and all that kind of stuff. And they're checking the content ID box when they do that. And then content ID becomes uh, a big thing. I don't have any yeah. of the songs that are in my exclusive libraries in content ID. That's only for my <clears throat> non-exclusive music. So um, this library has changed its, has stopped and said, new. It, it, it just has to across the board tell people not to put it in Spotify because they can't trust that people won't involve it into content ID. Yeah, so isn't that kind of interesting because it, it says something about what the uh, the scorekeepers uh, user, end users are, are like because, you know, this is a library that's sort of crossing into, you know, TV and, and, and network territory, but also providing uh, assets for content creators, presumably. Otherwise, why would they be? Why would they care about content ID? Well, again, it's not that they. Well, they care about content ID. All of the libraries care about content ID, and they want that. There's not a library. I mean, they don't clear content ID things, or if they do, I, I don't know even know how they how they con they work with that. Let's say it's an advertisement, and the ad on YouTube is that was on TV is also on YouTube. 
then that has to be tracked back to the owners, which is the library and me. and Or the library is going to be the one that gets that income and then through through content ID. So that is important to them. I can see how that would be important to them, maybe on a minor way, but still important. So I think any library, and I think you're probably, I'll probably see this from my other libraries too, because it's not that we're all sheep not knowing what we're doing and putting it up to DistroKid. When I put stuff up to DistroKid, I never check the YouTube box, especially because it's it's extra. And so I wouldn't, I, I don't even care. My goal is to get it on Spotify mm -hmm. and Apple Music. <clears throat> My goal is not to get it out to out to CID or uh, Content ID yeah. through DistroKid. So um, this this change that this library has done doesn't affect me. As a matter of fact, I'm not one of the people that is is registering this incorrectly. I'm registering it with Spotify correctly. I still don't think they care if it's on Spotify per se. Um, but the problem is, it also goes to YouTube Music. And YouTube Music could grab, it could mess up CID somehow. Yeah, well, and I just so, think it's like in the in the in this day and age, it's like you know, it's it, people are are happy to provide uh, like proof of of the license and and then just clear it, you know, on on YouTube. So like, what's the big problem with uh, on Scorekeeper's end? I don't understand because like all the other libraries are are uh, are well. well it's not well just ahead. Scorekeepers. I think everybody, every library, exclusive library, wants to own their CID. They wanna they want that coming to them. So you and think the, that's the, what's the, going on with scorekeepers? They want to collect that that revenue stream on. Uh, oh, I know themselves? they do. They said okay. that up front. Okay. That's in the contract. It's in the contract of every exclusive deal I've done. Right. Um, they don't. They're not like a non-exclusive where they're like, oh yeah, just come and clear it. They're not going to clear it. They're going to say, hey, that's ours. You're the you're the advertiser. You're the TV show. Whatever. Right. And all that money is ours. All the sync money. And in fact, I I kind of look at content ideas some kind of sync income you know yeah so um, so they're essentially taking the same stance as art list which is you know like we don't want you to register your music with the content id because we're going to do that and we're going to yes. monetize it yeah yeah you know, uh, I th I th and the only the only people who don't are the pawn fives at least for now are the pawn fives and the motion arrays and the audio jungles yeah uh, eventually they might get that way but that could be a change um, that could be a change that's coming for sure 100 percent. it could be a global like li like i said think of this as a licensing issue not just as a royalty free or a non-royalty free issue so yeah um all these libraries can change and, and the only answer to this what if it does is what if it does i mean you're going to have to deal with it and that's what steve was talking about earlier where you have not just that income i know some people on the uh, on the discord are very dependent on their stock music or non-exclusive income you know royalty free income and yeah. then that's like ah uh, if that dips i'm in big trouble yeah, you know totally versus me it's just a it's just a very side hustle and so it, it, it when it comes in it's nice like i got a payment yesterday from envato for 60 bucks great you know that's that's fine uh it's good to have but that's not what i depend on to pay my rent you know but other people do you know, and yeah. especially if they have good months where they get a thousand or two thousand dollars and that's the biggest income they have, then that can be a big change. But I think the answer is to it's just like stocks when you have uh, the stock market, so to speak. Um, look at my ebook, by the way, stock market. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if if you place stocks you don't just play one stock it's it's you like play a portfolio it's like stocks. putting it all uh putting it all on on uh going all in on crypto <laughs> put it on on red put it all you know? put it, it's like it's like going all in on bitcoin and then and then the <laughs> bitcoin going down losing like 60 percent of its value uh yeah right. you know you don't you have to ha you have to diversify a little bit i think i think that that's a smart way to, to be in terms of the music business i think that's what a lot of like uh a lot of producers are, are sort of thinking these days, myself included. I just don't want to be too dependent on one source of income um, because it's just subject to, 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 to radical changes. Speaking of what you were saying about like the, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the, like the distributing it through like DistroKid or CD Baby and like, yeah, checking off that, um, that, uh, that YouTube, uh, the monetization thing, you know, I think a lot of people probably just do that and then they discover 
uh, uh, like music licensing, like post putting their stuff out on Spotify. And they're just like, oh, like, I wonder if this catalog would work for like, you know, this library or whatever. And then they and, and then it's already too late. You know, I think that um, you got to be careful about content. Be careful, man. especially CD Baby's language when you uh, I work a lot for my clients and with CD Baby because yeah. for a one off release, they're really better than DistroKid. If, I'm, if I have an artist who's only going to release every few years, there's right. no reason they should pay yearly to DistroKid. And, and when they can just do a one time thirty dollar or right now, it's like five dollars to release a single on CD Baby. Yeah. Uh, the, again, not sponsored, but CD Baby, you can send us money if you want to. But you also need to change your name. Um, <laughs> Why is that? You don't like the name? <laughs> what does it mean? They don't sell <laughs> CDs anymore. And, and that's true. So, yeah, that's what? true. It just is like, <laughs> yes. unless it's called content distribution, baby. Now it's not <laughs> it, like uh, anyone 18 or under listening is like, what's a CD? <laughs> <laughs> they really are. Um, uh, so, anyway. Um, but their language is very um, attractive uh, as far as like, and if you click the button, it says you really don't want us, it, uh, lots of other possibilities for your music to happen through television and film. Well, everybody clicking that would go, oh, no, I do. Well, if you are focused on getting that music into libraries, then you definitely and, and or you want to collect your YouTube income yourself like we do through identify and and control that aspect of your life like you do with bmi like you do with these other places then you need to control your own content id and not check those boxes right and that goes for all of them i don't know i'm sure it works a similar way with TuneCore, similar way with the muse but i don't i don't select youtube yeah monetization yeah same um all right so uh and and getting back to the the last answer on the what happens if a library suddenly changes its uh, structure, which also could go to what happens if a music library or a music income dries up and you're, and that you used to depend on and suddenly it just dries up. This is one of the very tenets of this channel, what we were just talking about. There has to be a lot of, of portfolio and or um, as, as Tom Dupree put it, a portfolio of small bets you've got all these kind of things going on you've got incomes coming from teaching from youtube channels from spotify from yeah. libraries from this and from that royalties everything is an income if you're if you're only and everyone listening to this podcast or watching this podcast is not only making their money through music too there's yeah. a lot of people who have day gigs and do music on the side to make some income so uh but you know it really hurts if you're one of if you if you're someone like us who has no other like uh, job that's not related to music, and so for sure that's why it's important to have other incomes. And I was just talking to Arco, and you know he just finished a computer de computer degree oh, cool. in India, and now he's getting ready to look at a music production slash uh, composing type of uh, study, and. Um, he, he, he always has that computer thing to fall back on. If music is not making him income, he can probably get a day gig, you know, doing code from home or doing networking for a company. It's very helpful to have those possibilities of income. Yeah, for sure. So it really helps the what happens if, you yeah. know, the insurance for what happens if my music career doesn't take off, you know? Totally. So, yeah, well, it, or, takes the, it takes the pressure off, right? You know, I... <laughs> I think it's really important to have a fallback plan of some kind uh, just to, you know, so you're not s stressed out beyond belief trying to make something work that might not work. Here's an, one that's been popping up. I just wrote this down because it's been popping up a lot inside the Discord. What happens if AI takes over? Yeah, this is such a, an interesting discussion and one that needs to be had. I, I feel like it's something that comes up again and again on on YouTube, like various different music production channels uh just because we're entering into this crazy age um some of the stuff that open ai is is uh, showcasing right now is literally mind blowing it's like really blowing people's minds um like the chat gpt thing uh you, you know is the uh, what the Dali uh, two like the the visual Ava uh, yeah so I've I've used Ava a bunch of times and um, you know 
I, there's so much to say about it, but I feel like yeah, we probably need a whole episode. It probably needs it. a whole episode. Yeah, it probably needs a whole episode. And and um, you know, at the end of the day, like right now, I'm not I'm not like w- like worried about it. And I think that it's like it's one of those things where I, I just don't think it's worth like fretting about it or, or worrying about it or trying to like resist it. Um, the, the, the winds of technology are, are going to blow, uh, one way or the other and, and things are going to change rapidly in the next five years. Um, but, um, I'm still, I look at some of these, I think the sneaky, I'm going to, I have something I call sneaky AI, which is things like scalar things like, uh, some of these, uh, orchestral libraries are starting to provide, uh, orchestral patterns for you just to go ahead and use right, um, right. all the easy drum or easy guitar, easy piano, easy keys, whatever. Yeah, they all have these uh, these MIDI um, these MIDI MIDI patterns. Which Engines, are not yeah, great, like by it, the way, it's, that's not really AI, you know. No, like, it's not, but it's it's still the cheating that is similar to AI. Let's say yeah, you yeah. say, hmm, I don't make music. I want to make music because I love music. But I can go to this computer program and say, ooh, I want something just like Stevie B's, uh, what was the, ooh, I like that. What was that one called? Um, oh, oh, that's ooh, really that's good. that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's real good. And they feed in, oh, that's real good. And it comes up with something like, oh, that's real good. Like a derivative work, yeah. And that's that's just around the that's corner. That's where it gets, it gets it, it like, gets weird. okay, you're, you're just, that's, there's got to be copy. Then we're going to get, can you imagine? It's going to be a copyright nightmare, dude. If we have a copyright case where someone is fighting against some song that sounds just like theirs because it, the you told the computer to make it just like that, yeah, and 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 you've got twelve jury members who are not musical people, how will they know what is best? Will they understand what AI is doing? Will they side with the human or or with the computer? Well, you there's, know I mean, you know, it's really it's so fast. It's exactly that is the big question right now because um if you remember like a few years back there was that youtube channel i wish i remember the name i should have um pulled this up but uh they um they're using a like a voice emulation engine so it, and they created a bunch of rap songs uh using like an emulation of jay-z's voice i think um and so they had like jay-z rapping some verses that they like they typed in i think it was like a bible verse or something yeah. like that and uh <laughs> And I think that Jay Z actually his like his company um, uh, sent like a cease and desist to the channel and telling them to take it down because it was like you know using his likeness, um, yeah. and it was like, they you know it was, it argued that it was an infringement. Um, and I think that the like Google actually did take the YouTube ch- channel down um, initially, but then they ruled against the strike and brought it back up, and and then the with the eventual um sort of idea that being that like it's actually not infringement because it's not jc it's a it's a computer yeah, but do they have to pay him i don't know i don't know i don't know if the, if it was any if it was settled in any way but i don't think so and i and i think that remember sampling and taking someone else's beat and or hook from their 70s hit song has now become just a co-writing issue. In other words, if you want to use Hall and Oates' Sarah Smile in your song, which is a big hit from the 70s by Hall and Oates, all you have to do is get in touch with their publisher and say, hey, this artist who is a big artist wants to use that song and we'll just cut you in as 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 uh, co-authors. In other words, they just it's a co-write, basically. Yeah. We're going to make this new version. It'll probably do very well because this artist has this history and the label makes the decision and says, cool. Well, yes, look, Hall and Oates uh, would love to be the co-writers of that song. You that know? That's totally legit. And and uh, th- th- I think what'll end up happening is it, it'll really depend on who um, who has the lawyers to, to like, you know, to make these cases because the average composer or the no name, you know, composers like 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 myself, um, you know, you might have someone say like, let's like make me a track, you know, like Stevie B's, and uh, you know, what am I going to do about it? I'm not going to be able to do yeah. anything because I don't have the resources to 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 you know to to file some sort of copyright um, suit against it. I can't take it to court. I can't afford to take it to court. Um, yeah. You see these, you know, these these copyright cases like, um, you know, like Pharrell and like Robin Thicke when they when they did that uh, when yeah. that one track, you know, where they they got um, sued uh, for it because successfully the atmosphere and it was, was the same. Exactly. So it was it was too much. It was too similar. But it was like a totally original track. I mean, it's, no, it's, it was too similar to the 
feel of it the feel the jury the vibe of it yeah and 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 that was a successful suit and that was like a warning shot too um but but you know at the same time i think like uh that was a case where like they had the resources to like actually file the suit and and like and have it be successful in the first place where like whereas people like you and me like you know the average like uh, like mu- music producer and, and musician is like does not have the resources to to do that. So here's my here's my question in, in Discord today. What happens if AI produced music gets into the content ID system, which is also AI listening, trying to figure out what's on there? That's, Will uh, YouTube say, oh, now that there's this song that was com- made by AI that's that uh, based on Stevie B's song? And how will it know the difference between Stevie B's song and that song? And uh, will it, uh, you know, uh, it's just a nightmare when it's you start thinking a total about nightmare. what could happen. Because eventually everybody's going to do what Content ID is doing, which is listen to what's on the radio and hear it. And the computer's going to say, oh, this belongs to so-and-so. And it's going to, you know, every everything will be computer monitored. Television shows, I mean, TuneSat is basically some probably some kind of software like that where it's listening yeah. to every television show and letting us know your music's being played i did have some music last year last christmas where it was playing a song and i got a tune set report when i went to listen it wasn't my version it was another orchestral version of the same song that was really close but i knew it wasn't mine because it was in a different key yeah and right. it hadn't been tuned up and so um, these these kind of listening systems and then you have AI. Going to be very interesting. That's for sure. I think that so, I think that the AI th- is a threat to not just is is it's not just a, 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 a like a like a scary question for composers. It's it's also going to be difficult for libraries, music libraries, to contend with the technology as well. Because I think that you know you can just as easily uh, build an entire library off of a der- off derivatives of one library's catalog. You know, if it's as easy as just plugging it into an AI system and being like create us a track that sounds similar to this yeah you know it's like if it is if the libraries don't own that proprietary ai technology then they're they're in a lot of trouble yeah so it's it's a it's a uh, a question uh, for sure that we're just going to have to see but again if you're scared and, and and the problem is it not it doesn't only deal with music licensing either way sync licensing or or, or stock licensing it also uh, goes into the spotify world and stuff like that totally. but yeah guess what everybody can put whatever they want on spotify you can have made it completely yourself uh, or you could have produced it and not played an instrument and paid for it yourself or you could have had it generated by a computer there's plenty of music that composers are making and putting on spotify that goes back to what i was saying they had a they had patterns generate everything. They didn't write a thing. All they did was put a bunch of patterns in, and and let the and a drummer track off Logic and let the let and just record that and put it up. I've got students doing it now, mm-hmm. where they just make they just g- grab a bunch of loops, put them all together, hide hide them enough that they're not pulled. You know they're royalty free or whatever, and they get them in a system. How much different of uh, than is AI than that? Well, you know, I think that what doesn't really like frighten me, at least in the short term, is the fa- is the fact that people are. St- it's not like people are just going to give up on human generated artists or uh, or music and like and artists. You know, people still want that human connection, and I think that you know, is if if you're growing your own brand. Uh, you know, people are going to be connected to you as as a person, and they're going to support you. And and I think that that isn't going away. I don't think AI is going to like just well, make artists obsolete. But the the creation process is going to change. You know, the the process of creating music it's going to open doors for a lot of people that you know maybe don't have the resources in the same way that it already has. Technology has created a lot of opportunities for people that didn't have the resources to go into a big studio. I mean, that's what the you know um, the, the this the, my little interface and my laptop has done. It's it's created opportunities for people. You know, it, it's opened doors. It hasn't closed them. But uh, plus, here's what AI can't do: it can't simulate your performance live. Well, not, can't... not yet. I mean, you know, maybe they'll have like cyborgs one day that are like, you know, more <laughs> okay. interesting to watch than, but that but hopefully, hopefully beyond about. my, my lifetime. <laughs> Again, the same answer, how to handle this question is the same answer as we had for the first question. Diversify, have lots of things going on, have lots of 
of ways that you make music and make music income. The AI that reproduces your your stock music song can't reproduce your live performance uh, in person. It can't reproduce a necessarily a music video that you made. And uh, I, I mean, I guess it could, but you know, I, I think you're just worrying about one issue sometimes if you worry about AI and stock music or AI and sync licensing or AI and copyrights and I mean the uh, content ID. Um, again, if you have a lot of things going on, if you're teaching students, it can't, you know, take over the way you teach people. Uh, we're still you um, unique people until the robot revolution really yeah. happens. We're all still uh, able to handle this. Yeah. All yeah. right. So. Let's move on to another one. Here's uh, we're gonna save the most final and depressing one for the end, about because uh, this is a question I got yesterday, and it's it's worth talking about uh, yeah. about what happens when you pass away and you have songs and music. But we'll talk about that last because I think it's it's the last thing that you ever have to deal with, or maybe not even have to deal with. What happens uh, if you lose the 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 feeling if you lose the love for composing or producing or performing i know a lot of people and i'm one of them who is only marginally interested in in performing it, it has to be something that like a jazz trio that i really love working with that i feel comfortable in and and and, and even that there's a lot of work that goes into it for me and i, I just totally. don't know if i want to spend my time doing that and so I know a lot of, or people who have really burned out on the road yes. and they've burned out playing to drunks all the time and they just can't do it anymore. That's me. Dave is, I know Dave is in that same boat where he is kind of giving up uh, playing live events. It's just not fulfilling to him anymore. I'm in the boat with producing. I, I've been producing artists for 25, 30 years. I'm, I just don't care to produce what someone else wants right in for, at this point you know i've been doing that only or mostly for a lot of years and so for me i've burned out on being someone's producer that makes them all sound good and 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 all that kind of stuff and so i'm doing it a little less than i than i a lot less than i used to mm -hmm. but and you could also burn out on composing and i know a lot of my students come into my class and they're interested in audio they don't know what they're they're thing is going to be are they going to be live audio people are they going to be producers are they going to be audio engineers they're going to be what composers whatever yeah and some people think oh composing sounds fun and then they try it and they just go oh this is not for me it's too it's just not for me or you have composers who have been composing for years and we've heard about this you've heard of uh, famous composers just stopping um somebody was just telling me the other day about somebody who just stopped oh um uh, there's a couple of composers who just stopped. They just like retired and said, I'm done. I don't, right. I don't want to write another note. Said what I've had um, to say. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, so what happens if that happens to you? What, and, and you were making money from that and you're the Rolling Stones and you say, we're never touring again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, well, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I definitely but let's not use the rolling stones because they've got all these other income sources coming from yeah, different places yeah they're like so, so let's I, use a a semi-pro like you or i who maybe has performed locally regionally and yeah well could, I, had made money from it yeah you totally talk i mean more to this I, I i burnt out on the road for sure um i don't really want to go back on and on the road and tour i i don't mind performing so much um but it's it's just the life on the road is just it's just too much for me and uh you know, I, I think that just I sort of naturally pivoted towards something that was more stable, which is which is music production. And I think, um, you know, it, it's a perfect uh, it was a, it was a great pivot because, I you know, I get to be creative, um, which I'm compelled to be. But um, I don't ha you know, I have the stability of just being, you know, um, at home and being able to take care of myself and such. So. You know, I, I do foresee, you know, that maybe sometime in the future, like I can't discount the possibility that at one point in the future, I'll, I'll burn out on composing. It's totally possible. And maybe I'll pivot to to like gardening or something like that and start like a YouTube channel about gardening. I don't know. You know, there's uh, life. Stevie B's gardening. <laughs> yeah, li life is long, man. There's so many different things that you can do. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to all the all the possibilities. And um. 
I, I'm just, I think you just have to, to, to have an open heart, you know, like I, I, I think that part of it, the, the pivot, like, like looking back to transitioning um, from being like a performer to like a music producer was just accepting that um, the, the vision that I had for my life is not set in stone uh, because, you know, I grew up through, you know, through my, all my teenage years, essentially believing that the you know my like or you know thinking that i was going to be um a, like a performing musician like touring guy like for the rest of my life like i just had tunnel vision when i was a kid uh thinking that like that was going to be that is like the the path for me you know and it's never going to change um so once i sort of accepted that the the change does come eventually and you know i just sort of opened my my heart up to uh the the, the possibility of things uh, evolving and and letting go of the initial vision um, and and making way for for something else to come into my life and I think that once I was able to do that I felt a lot more comfortable about the transition in the first place um, yeah. and I'm I'm so happy that it's it's it, things have worked out the way they have you know I love that word pivot because I feel like I have pivoted several times in my career I started as a teenage songwriter and thinking songwriting and getting a publishing deal is all I ever wanted. And then in my 20s and 30s, people started wanting me to produce for them and make recordings for them. And I thought, how cool, being a music producer, cool. Yeah. And so that became really what what uh, turned into my, my main, I guess you would say, if you look back over my life, people, a lot of people probably know me mostly professionally as a music producer. Right. But personally, I always thought of myself as a songwriter, and now I'm kind of back to that as a composer. I'm actually speeding up. I'm a little bit like a who. The, there's a guy, there's a hockey player who just went over 800 goals like oh, wow. last night. Uh, Ovechkin, you Ovechkin. know who he is. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a hockey fan, but I was listening to a sports show the other day, and they were talking about that. And you know, he's speeding up. He's he as he gets older, he's having better seasons. And right. I'm. I'm the same way. I'm composing more each year. I have more. Of course, I, I, I think the past two or three years since I've been getting into licensing, there's been a, a reason to write more. There's, yeah. it, it's not just been only when I'm, you know, when I'm inspired. There's been like, oh, they need. I need to write a full album for this library, or I need to write music for this library, or whatever. Totally. But um, I, I think it's it's. Uh, the pivot thing is important because I have pivoted back to being a composer and I'm so happy to do that. And and now educator. The other thing we didn't talk about in burnout is, is social media slash in, um, influencer slash cr content creator burnout. And what mm -hmm. if we both just decided and we, and we've probably thought about it, yeah. these channels. Oh man, I just, am I going to be able to, how long can I keep up this content? How long, how long can I keep up creating all this content? Will I, will I dry out someday? And what if I do then do I have to let the, the channel go? What do I, you know, and you see, yeah. man, do, I, do you see this all the time or what on channel on these channels where the content creator is like, all right, I'm changing the direction of my channel. <laughs> I'm going this way now. Yeah, and all we've all done it. Yeah, we've all done it. And it's like, <laughs> it, it is so taxing and it's like, it, it I I do for, foresee myself being like a content creator for for quite a long time yeah. because I think that it is it is uh, the way of of the future. I think that people are moving online, and I think it makes sense for me to do it. And I've really embraced it, and I like it. But yeah, man, it's like it's always I'm always reassessing my relationship with social media uh, and trying to find like the, like a really healthy balance because um, uh, you know. It get, it gets it just gets too much. You can it can really like consume all of your 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 thoughts, and um, you you get into a zone where you're like worried about how many views you're getting, and like you know whether you're whether you're you're growing, and the algorithms are demanding more and more from you. You can put a lot of pressure on yourself and just burn so, yourself out for that. So I guess the answer to what happens if you lose the love, you you lose the impetus, the the desire to create music to produce music perform music to make content is that you pivot is that you move to the next thing and and maybe this is uh this is can you imagine i'm saying this maybe it's not a music thing maybe it is gardening maybe it's another creative venture maybe it's totally. writing i know a lot of people who have gone from 
uh, to from from music to uh, writing right. or uh, or art, uh, you know, some kind of visual creative, art. artistic thing, visual arts, yeah. And so uh, and photography and and things like that, which are very similar and related. You're still composing shots. You're composing art pieces and and books and things like that so yeah um I, i've said this before on on things before think maybe writing is not a or some some other kind of creative outlet maybe if you burn out for a while if it's a little like they always say about love if if you love it let it go if it comes back to you it's yours if it doesn't it never was if you love music and you let it go and it never comes back well maybe that's fine Maybe you don't need to be doing love. Maybe you need to pivot on over to something else that really uh, stokes your fires and go for that. And maybe there's a way to make income doing that. Um, or if you're at a, lucky enough to be at a place where you don't need the income and you can pivot over to that, then yeah. maybe you do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, I don't think we need to talk about what if a pandemic comes. I think we know, we saw, and talk about all these things. The pandemic affected all of them. Yeah. Performing producing composing all it, it probably got a lot more people composing during that time because that was something they could do by themselves in a room uh since they couldn't go anywhere yeah right um, but um you know that we found out we 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 could have asked this question five years ago what a, what if a worldwide pandemic comes and everybody is shut in if <laughs> if you see that have you ever seen the websites with people who say me and myself before the pandemic and i say uh and i'm and, and she's having a conversation with herself about to, with her pre-pandemic self and say oh by the way in about six months you won't be able to do this and then she's like what come on don't be ridiculous you won't be able to get toilet paper what why <laughs> and you know all this kind of stuff and uh it's very funny but um so if a pandemic comes, we kind of have a plan now and this is what we're talking about what if what happens if these things happen yeah right so let me let me just hit this last one i think that will probably be a, a good a good ending to this and that is and, and it the answer is somewhat similar but what happens to your music i just got asked this yesterday in a live just randomly uh what happens to your music and your royalties if you die and he specifically asked would it how would my kids get the income from my music what happens to my music where does it go what i mean who i used to have uh, on my other computer over there i have a, a little thing that says just in case it's a little document and inside that it has information for my wife on where our insurances are and all that kind of stuff in case she's like if i died she would have instant idea of where everything is and right right how to get it passwords all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. So um, now everybody's going to try to hack into that computer. <laughs> you should, should be, yeah. <laughs> but I, on there, I had at one point I had if my if I die, please have so and so. And I've had different people, like my brother or different people, be the steward of my music and take my music and do things with it. I've since taken that off because you know what happens when I die with my music? Nothing more. I mean, I don't have a company that runs you know uh four different uh my libraries and my sync and my spotify and all that kind of stuff what's going to happen unfortunately is your music's going to die with you, or i should say any new music is going to die with you there's not going to be more what you wrote what beethoven wrote he wrote 700 something compositions they're famous but they stopped when he passed away he didn't write anything past that uh unless unless ai writes it for i was just going to say unless until they uh until i make some like some new eric copeland mixes <laughs> which is fine and they you will know, live as on. long as my they name live on it's like steve martin said in, in the jerk she's like what what if i'm date you and and don't and just friends with this guy and then what if i date the guy and just friends with you and eventually he said you know what just so I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, right. And that's how I feel about this. Just as long as my name, if my name is ever heard again with my music, that that would be great. You have to look at um, first of all, let's let's talk about what happens when you die with like Spotify. Yeah. And the answer is really nothing. I mean, uh it now it with DistroKid, if you're on a place you pay every year and you stop paying it, that music will go off. But they have legacy type options that you can you can pay to keep your music on 
uh, forever. And now what does forever mean? Who knows? I'll tell you what the last 22 years have meant since um, Spot, not Spotify, CD Baby became a thing. I started working with them in 1999 and I put music up there that is still up there. Uh, that is now in Spotify and all these places in YouTube and Amazon only because everything they pulled everything that was in the um, uh, let's see the CD catalog. You know, at first before there was Spotify and and those kind of things, there was iTunes, right? And iTunes just pulled everything that was in, you know, in in these in these companies that were distributing music. So distributors will always have your music if a new kind of thing displaces streaming, like you know, v music in the sky, you VR know, or it, it, it will just pull all the tunes from what's on Spotify now. So your music will live on in that, uh, in that way, it'll move on into that next technology, just like it's moved into streaming from downloading. Mm -hmm. So I think your music will, that you have up to these engines, unless it's in a, a some kind of distributor that pulls it down if you quit paying, uh, which is like, you know, you stay alive until they pull the plug, <laughs> you know, your music stays alive. Until do you, do you opt point. in for the, the, the forever thing on DistroKid? I don't. Yeah, either um, do I. So I come to think of it, it's like, it's an interesting discussion because it's like, if I died, then, um, you know, those fees would, uh, would, would stop being paid at some point. And then, you know, there goes my music. I probably might, I might suggest to my wife that if I die, she goes ahead and pays the legacy on all the things that are in those kind of places. Right. And make sure that that becomes a legacy item and is always on the, 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 the services, whatever services they are, streaming, VR, whatever the future is for what's next. It seems like streaming is going to be around a while. But, um, you know, the minute I die, the, I stop putting new stuff up to Spotify unless... Mm -hmm. Someone comes in and does that for me, but who's really going to do that? I mean, is my wife going to come in and search through my computer and find songs? She doesn't know or care to m mess with DAWs and stuff like that is yours. I mean, it, it, who will, it, I, I guess if you have a spouse or a, a, a child or something who is very musically inclined, they could take your music and, and uh, unreleased stuff and put it out. But most of us don't have that. Most of us don't have kids or spy or spouses or or friends that would be able to do it and plus no one's going to be able to do it like you did you're the only one you're the p person most uh m most energized to, to put that out nobody else is yeah yeah well i think you know what you've done with like like you know writing a little contingency plan for yeah. if if uh god forbid you pass away then like you know you have someone to sort of like take care of your um, your uh, your intellectual property. I think that's a good idea. You know, maybe just like taking get, write a little note to somebody you trust, um, or put you it know, in or, your will, or, or in your living will, or, or or yeah, if you even want to write write a will. Um, I think you should write a will. Yeah, wills like wills cost money. I think right. I mean, I think you can. Well, like, you can do it online very cheaply, right? And, and and you could do an unofficial will on your computer, you which is an, better than no. That's will what at I mean. All. That's what I mean. It's like you, if you don't want to do an official one, you can do an unofficial one, and just like make sure that you have like a family member, someone you you trust to take care of it if 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 it happens. Um, it's definitely something that I've not thought about that much, but uh, come to think of it, I really should. I really should put uh, my um, my affairs in order because you never know. Yeah, and, and it's all about just making sure that, um, I mean, hey, listen, if you die, if you have investments, I'm telling you, anybody who has investments that they think are worth 10, 20, 30, 100,000 or more is going to have a will. Yeah, because right. that, that money, so if you think of your music as important as as that, as investments that you make with your bills you're going to have you're going to probably want to put a will together to say hey when i die um, of course and and then we get over to the royalty side because let's let's put aside you know the 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 stores that have your music in them or the libraries that have your music in them let's put aside how do all those royalty monies get where you want them well first of all they're going to keep coming to your bank cuz most all royalties are paid automatically your um, sync royalties, and I call sync royalties what we get from 
stock music libraries or sync oh, exclusive libraries for television and film. Yeah. Excuse me. And um, all those kind of come in to a certain account that they have to pay you. If it's yeah, usually right. it's a PayPal account PayPal right? or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so my wife has full access to my PayPal account. So any monies that come in automatically from those and will continue until I tell them not to, or she tells them not to, will continue just to come into the PayPal account. That money is coming in. My PRO royalties are going to come straight into my bank account, which she also has, you know, access to. And I hope she's not listening to this because she may just knock me off. So, you know, to get those. But anyway, yeah, wait, are you saying I got to uh, give my wife uh, access to my PayPal account? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, and, and that's something to think we, about. We share is... we share a bank account actually. So you know, if, okay. Uh, yeah, eventually she she would be able to 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 figure that all that out. But. Um, yeah, you guys yeah, you are know, married I mean, less than one year. We're married thirty three years, so uh, <laughs> it's a little different. But yeah. at this point, you know, it's it, everything is kind of taken care of. But PRO, Content ID, uh, Sound Exchange, um, what's the other one? MLC. I just got an MLC payment today. I also got a Motion Elements payment today. Oh wow! <laughs> Talking Congrats. about random. <laughs> but all of those payments automatically just come to my accounts. I don't have to go request them. I don't. Now I do have to make sure before I die. And as I go along, that all the songs are getting up to all of those things to be recorded and cataloged correctly so that that money does come back to my estate, so to speak, or to my, right now, uh, my wife and I are the estate. Um, now, it's a little trickier how the where the money goes if my wife and I both pass and my, and my son and daughter, how do they, you know, do all that? So again, having it written down somewhere and having everyone understand it that you care about know hey there are i have songs out there they're going to generate royalties and there's and payments and you need to make sure you know that they're coming into these accounts and uh that's no different than if you have investments out there and they come into certain accounts they're going to need to know that too i've had parents pass away before where i had to know where their money is because i have to now you know, uh, distribute it between people because I'm the executor of my father's estate and I have to figure this out. So right. um, all of this answer to what happens if I die to your music and to your royalties. Well, hopefully the music is out there. And folks, this is the reason why we preach so hard to put your music out, put it out in sheet music form, in Spotify form, in licensing form, on your YouTube page, on your website, put it out there because if you don't and you die it dies with you yeah yeah not to be not to be very uh morbid but it just does and and guess what if even if you don't die and you never put it out and you go off and do something else that music still dies it still just dies with you you know eventually mm -hmm. yeah good good uh interesting thoughts for sure <laughs> yeah you're you're de you're thinking deep, deep now you're like deep. oh I'm like oh, yeah, i gotta go right. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta, gotta go. <laughs> I got some work to do. Yeah, I do um, actually have some work to do on that front. And I do too. And maybe all of you listening to this are also thinking that you you now have some work to do and things to think about. And I hope this has been something to think about because it's not these aren't questions we always think about. What happens if we're just all caught up in the moment of ooh, I yeah. just made a new song. I'm gonna put it up and do this and that. But we have to remember that there are things that can happen, like pandemics, like death, that uh, like AI which all all our could people would say are bad um could be things that uh, we have to have answers to and think about that so maybe yeah i hope these have been helpful to you and and maybe given you something to think about today yeah absolutely all right everybody well um i think this is a time for us to wish you a merry christmas and happy holidays and happy new year because uh, I, I might have some lives between now and New Year on my channel. Yeah, but... I, th I think I only got one video uh, in me bef between now and the New Year, uh, just because things are so crazy. But I do kind of want to have like, um, uh, sort of like a like a breakdown of my not like uh, what do you call it when uh, New Year's not a resolutions uh, video necessarily, but sort of a game plan. I have a, a kind of a game plan in mind that I'd like to share with the channel. Um, so, so I, I also that. was thinking about maybe we could do one together because I do too. But there's another one I was thinking about around uh, sometime around the new year that we'll we'll just we'll talk about this off air and discover and and figure this out. But uh, I'd love for us to do one together as well. Yeah, I think 
I think here's one uh, podcast 54. I was thinking our music focus for 2023 or something like that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, whichever ones we don't do for our own channels, because I'm sure you have some plan for your channels and I do too about last year and next year and things I'm quitting and all that kind of stuff. I like to do that yeah, on my channel. Yeah, I, I might do a, instead of doing like a, a next year video, maybe I'll do a recap of this last year because, and yeah. talk about some of the goals that I had for, for this year, which I, you know, which I talked about in January. So yeah. that might be cool. And then we can talk about next year on, uh, on the next Yeah, podcast, our, fo our episode, focuses so. yeah. Uh, and where they're going to lie. I think that's always interesting for people. So maybe we can do that uh, in the next podcast. So, sure. all right, everybody. Have a great Christmas. Merry uh, Christmas. Happy holidays. Between now and then. And uh, just have a blessed a blessed rest of the year. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, we'll have stuff out there. We always do. Unless yeah. we burn out. <laughs> what happens if we burn out before Christmas? Oh, well. We'll Gonna start that gardening <laughs> career. <laughs> so Stevie B will be gardening in the snow. And uh, this is all I'll just be, a... This is all just to announce my gardening YouTube channel coming new next year. Coming next year. Stevie B Gardening. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, well we'll look right. forward to that all right everybody have a great great uh christmas we'll talk to you soon yeah bye bye see you soon <laughs> stevie be gardening i really like it i don't know where i came up with that <laughs> gardening i